Good morning, everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, we're in chapter 12 of the book of Revelations. We're just going to get right into it after a word of prayer. Our Father, we give you glory and honor and praise for all that you have done. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who you are and what you have done and what you will continue to do. And Lord, as we look forward to the great triumphal finish of this earth and the finish of Satan and death and hell and the grave, we give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're in the book of Revelations, chapter 12, this evening, or this morning. Somebody might be this evening. It depends when you decide to watch it, because we're on YouTube, we're on BitChute, we're on Minds.com, we're on Facebook. So if you like what you're hearing, or if you have a comment, um, there is a, a link uh, on any of our uh, outlets that you can comment on. You can also donate if you want to. You can uh, like us and share us. Uh, and you know we're not trying to do this to get famous we're trying to do this to see as many souls get saved uh, and take as many people to heaven with us as we possibly can okay so keep that in mind too as well all right let's read start reading in, uh, chapter 12 amen uh, we're talking about the woman the child and the dragon so let's listen now remember we haven't seen dragons in a very long time uh, on this earth but we're going to see it in, in Revelation chapter 12, we're going to see who and what the dragon is, who the woman is, who the child is. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of twelve stars. Then being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth, which is normal for pregnancy for most people. I do know a couple of women that they had children and they didn't have the pain. Uh, I remember my youth pastor's wife, Miss Bonita Epley. She hardly had any pain with any of her children when she when she was giving birth, and so some people have been blessed that way, but not very many. But most people give birth with much labor and lots of pain, and this woman here is of no difference when it comes to that. And another sign appears. So that was sign number one. Sign number two in chapter twelve. Behold, a great fiery red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, seven diadems on its heads, which means seven different crowns. Okay, each head had a crown. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. So this is a powerful supernatural dragon that we see here. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth. He was ready to devour her child as soon as it was born, waiting for the child to be destroyed so he could destroy this child. She was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Now what does that refer to when we look at that? Let me see here. We're going to see here. I want to see. The sign of the fiery red dragon is interpreted by as being, of course, Satan. His first appears in Scripture in the serpent of the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. The imagery is in keeping with the Old Testament and extra biblical uh, usage. The dragon with the seven heads and the ten horns refers to Satan and the empire over which he rules during the course of time. Seven heads, ten horns, seven diadems refer to Satan's brilliance his power and his glory. He's he's brilliant. He has power. He has glory. As a God of this age, as a God, small g, as a God of this age. In first in Second Corinthians four four, the description is almost identical to that of the beast from the sea in chapter thirteen verse one, which we'll get into next week. The reference to the third stars uh, links this event to the earlier trumpet judgments, to which a third is the characteristic proportion of destruction okay including a third of the stars however many understand this reference to speak of the rebellion of a third of the angelic host and following Satan the attempt of the dragon to devour the newborn Christ reveals that the strategy of Herod to kill the babies in Matthew chapter 2 was satanically inspired just like this is too so we're talking about the woman giving birth, the child that's going to be caught up by God and to God and to his throne. The male child will rule with an rod of iron is, is the messianic figure. So this is Jesus Christ. 
However, there is no earthly rule over nations at this point. From the perspective of the heavenly scene, the child or ruler is soon caught up to the throne of God, apparently referring to the ascension of Christ. Remember, he only spent 33 and a half years on this earth before he was brutally crucified. And after all that, then the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God. This isn't, the, this isn't the harlot woman. This is talking about Mary. And they should feed her there 1,260 days. 1,260 days. Where did we see that before? The two prophets of God. The two witnesses. Moses and Elijah. Also, 1,260 days. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with a dragon. Just like they did, I did, I believe, before earth was ever, you know, created. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. That means they were cast out of heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old. See, the Bible interprets itself. The Bible never fails to interpret itself. The Bible is always consistent from Genesis to Revelations. Or as some people say, from generations to revolutions. But, no. Just like way back in the very beginning, it's going to happen the same way in the end. Satan's cast out. And they call the devil Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So we fight. And if you look... We fight against, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against Satan and powers above us and, and uh, things unseen. So a lot of times when we're fighting physically, we're also fighting spiritually. But the, the Bible says our warfare is not with flesh and blood, but with, with, uh, with powers that are unseen. But they are known. They're, they're not unknown. They're just unseen a lot of times. People are blinded by the power of Satan. People are blinded by the brilliance and the supposed glory of Satan. Because why? Because Satan deceives. That's his main uh, modus operandi. Deceive people in believing, one, that you can be God. Number two, that you're in control of your own destiny. Which in some respects, when it comes to salvation, you have to say yes to God. To Jesus Christ. To God the Father, our Creator. But, you know, the biggest thing is, I'm the captain of my own ship. I don't want to be the captain of my own ship. I've, I, my ship has sunk too many times when I'm the captain. I don't want to sing that song like Frank Sinatra said, I did it my way. If you do it your way, you're going to fail. Don't get me wrong, I'm a sinner, and I still sin even as a Christian. But it's not because I want my way. Yeah, it, You know what it is? Because I want my way. And I have to repent every single time. I have to turn away. I have to walk away from it. I have to try not to sin again. It's not my pattern to continue to sin most of the time. He deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying, lots of loud voices in the book of Revelations, isn't there? See, God is loud and proud. You, you pride parades and all this other stuff, and they're becoming loud and proud. They're coming out of what we call the closet now. They're, 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 they're fighting for their, their you know, special rights, not just regular rights, special rights. They're fighting against what they consider hate speech. When you quote the Bible, they consider that hate speech. When you talk about Jesus and God, they consider that hate speech. They don't even believe in God. They don't believe in... They, don't, they, they think, they say they don't believe in Satan, but when you don't believe in God, you already automatically believe in Satan. When you don't believe in God and Jesus Christ, you're already on the side of the devil. Period. And it's not just enough to believe, because Satan believes in God and he trembles. But he doesn't repent. He doesn't turn away. He still pursues the same lies, the same deceit, the same sins, the same 
tries to kill as many people like a lion going about the earth seeking whom he may devour. So it's not just enough to believe. You have to give your life and your heart to Jesus Christ, to the Lord our Savior, to God the Father who created us. Satan didn't create us. Big Bang didn't create us. Evolution did not create us. Evolution is so fraught with fault with faults and, and lies and deceit to start with. Evolution is a racist way of believing. Evolution is a satanic way of believing. Evolution is the wrong way of believing about how we got created, who created us, and why he created us. So then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brother, that's Satan, that's what he loves to do, who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Amen? Satan will be cast down. Not just cast out, but cast down. The Bible says that he's going to be in the fiery pits of hell for a thousand years. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. For me to, to, to live is, uh, for me to die, for Christ to live. That's how they felt. I'm not worried about my life. Because this life on this earth, the way it is, is temporary. The older I get, hopefully the wiser I get. The closer I get to, to, to eternity, the more and more and more I'm putting my trust in God all the time that God's going to get me there. I'm not going to get myself there. I can't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, I would have to pay the penalty of my sin. And I would never pay it in full ever throughout all of eternity. Only Christ could do that. And they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony, and they did not love the lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. Man, there's a lot of wrath. devil is angry, the earth is angry, people are angry, and God is angry. Because he knows. Why is he angry? Because he knows he has a short time at this time. Very short time. In the scheme of eternity, he's got a very short time left on this earth. Left on, you know, in people's, you know, to be able to influence people's hearts, minds, and lives. The devil has come down having great wrath. Because he's angry too. A lot of anger going on in the book of Revelations. But it's, it's, it's going to get done. Now we go back to the woman. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place. The Bible says in Corinthians, God always provides a way of escape, amen, when it comes to being tempted, but also when it comes to being persecuted, when it comes to being, uh, you know, threatened. So, where that, that she might fly into the wilderness to a place where she is nourished for a time and times and a half. Which is the 1,260 days. From the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman. That he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood with the dragon. And had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged or angry with the woman. And she went, and he went, sorry. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. So, wasn't enough to go after just the first child, Jesus Christ. We know that physically on earth he had other brothers and sisters. We all know physically and spiritually on earth that every man, woman, and child that receives Christ is the bride of Christ. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Still trying to get, he knows he has a short time, but he's trying to get as many people, 
I know when we make a push at, 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 at work to make sales, we make a final end push a lot of times for trying to get as many sales as we possibly can. So not only do we meet our goals, but we exceed our goals. And that's what Satan's trying to do with him, with his job too. He's trying to meet and exceed his goal, trying to get as many people. He loves to see everybody go to hell with him. He loves to see everybody be deceived by him. But not everybody's going to be deceived. Not everybody's going to go where he goes. Not everybody's going to suffer the same uh, eternity that he's going to suffer. And I hate, I hate it just as much as you do that we get persecuted. We get uh, ridiculed. We get mocked. We get, uh, we get tortured at times. Uh, martyrs that get tortured for the cause of Christ. But it's all going to end. It's all going to end. The end is the end, and the end is coming. He's not going to have power over the woman. He doesn't have power over the, the first male child here. He doesn't have power over those that, that are Christians, those that, are, that keep his commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's a victory lap for you and for me. He doesn't have that reward coming to him. Even though he's going to try his darndest during this time. God reigns. Satan is defeated. Satan loses. He always loses. He may win some battles, but he does never, ever, and will never, ever win the war. In the book of Revelations. We're over halfway in the book of Revelations now. We're going to be in chapter 13 uh, next week. And I just pray, God, that you use this as a tool to witness to others, to seek and save those which are lost. In Jesus' name, amen.